Welcome everyone. I'm your host, Jenny G. Cousins, and I'm interviewing Bob Jaco. He is the founder of Co-Creation, Co-Creation Global, and editor-in-chief of Co-Creation Magazine. We are conducting this interview today from Down Under, Australia, and Bob is a translator of soul and soul's love. So he's going to explain to you exactly what that means. And thank you, Bob. Welcome. Thank you, Jenny. It's a pleasure to be here once again. Um, I'm looking forward to the, uh, the conversation we're going to have today with uh, you and uh, all your viewers and um, happy to, uh, to, uh, to give any uh, insight into what we do and uh, where we're going with this. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Okay, the, the question you are, uh, passed, uh, asked me was soul. Uh, let me explain what soul actually is. Uh, soul uh, stands for signals of love. It's a frequency and an energy uh, which I connected with when I was 10. And um, uh, you could say it, it was uh, a frequency uh, born about by the fact that I was quite often beaten by my father. And mm. uh, he was a fairly abusive sort of a fellow. And basically, I went inside and started, uh, and this voice appeared, and that voice appeared in a way that he, it was, you know, you, you know the difference between when you're nuts <laughs> mm -hmm. and when you're not. Uh, this was a voice that was intelligent. It was loving and it had wisdom uh, and insight uh, encapsulated in, into all the data streams, all the information that it used to send me. Well, it still does. Still does. Uh, and so this voice has been uh, with me on a journey of nearly 60 years, 62 wow. today. So I've been transmitting and using the intelligence and the wisdom to basically navigate my life, but also to navigate a perspective where I began to understand, and it showed me uh, what, we're, what we are here as humans to experience, to learn, to gain, to evolve, to transform, and to heal if, if that's necessary. So it's been a, a 62 year journey in, uh, in that particular respect. Uh, basically, you could say that I have lived, observed, and experienced two worlds. Uh, the world of the physical uh, as a phenomenon of my internal world. Mm -hmm. So the first thing I learned many years ago is that I was the co-creator of every experience that I was having. In other words, I thought about it, I intended it, and I made it happen in very simple terms. Mm -hmm. And that means everything. There was no exclusions to these, uh, these experiences, good, bad, and ugly. Basically, <laughs> um, one would suggest that when you learn about this really powerful tool we have as human beings, that we are actually the exact replica, the exact copy of source itself embodied in this physical form, which in, sense, in a sense is an illusion because the only real reason we can feel that is because we co-created senses. You know, mm -hmm. the ability to see, hear, feel, taste, touch. And all of those senses gives us the impression that everything is solid and real. That mm -hmm. is, and it's only an impression because we're really frequencies that vibrate at a specific speed that allows all our molecules, our vibrational structure to form solidity which is then enhanced by our senses. 
to give us a taste of real experience. Mm -hmm. Now, the basis of experience was for us to begin to transform, to grow. And the circle of life and the reason we exist is because we chose to in the first place. Secondly, we're extensions of source. Therefore, every experience we have and say there's 7.6 billion of us, there are 7.6 billion experiences happening every microsecond wow. about this planet. Amazing. Every microsecond. And these experiences, and, you know, I don't even have to go into all the other forms of yeah. life, which would be quadrillions, all doing the same thing, all inputting back to the origins of us and what we call the universes, which is, again, infinite, uh, to understand that this thing we call infinite source consciousness mm. is basically co-creating all these life forms, these physical forms, so it can grow and understand. Source itself knows, knows basically everything a bit like facebook i suppose but beyond that source itself has in itself the knowledge of everything past present and future source itself is the creator mm -hmm. of everything that it extended itself into other realities into realities mm -hmm. to co-create and this is why i use the word co-create because it is a uh, cooperative process between source and its extensions, which is us. Okay? And this is what most people don't fully understand. It's a cooperative process, a co-creative process. So when we co-create, because we are all connected by the one consciousness, although we may appear different, we're all connected as the one consciousness. So therefore, what happens for one happens to all because remember, we are conduits. In other words, we share the same information, although we don't experience the same thing at the same time. But we share all the intelligence, if you like, the frequencies of all of those that go back to source. Mm -hmm. And that's why, you know, when two people have what appears to be a similar experience, it's not, it appears the perception of similar. But let's talk about trauma. You know, if two people have the, they stub their toe, okay, that's trauma mm -hmm. and pain, but they feel the trauma and the cause of the trauma are different. The location is the same the perceptions of pain is different because their biology is different, their pain receptors are different, and the outcome could be different as well. But, you know, uh, two people stubbing their toe all over the planet has a perception. I experienced tubbing my, uh, stubbing my toe, uh, and therefore there is pain, there is blood, mm -hmm. there is also things. But there's a variation in that experience because every experience has a uniqueness. And it also yes. has an opportunity for that individual to understand what, you know, what about, what did I do to stub my toe and what shall I learn from this particular mm -hmm. event? Uh, so we can, we can choose another way, you know, fix our, fix our uh, steps or, uh, yes. um, you know, uh, watch where we walk or, mm -hmm. or, or things like mm -hmm. that. So soul, uh, soul is really, you know, when it comes down to it, soul is me mm -hmm. uh, in, in that particular context. But soul is also you and every person I am talking to, uh, we are talking here today, when I transmit soul in, in terms of uh, conversations, mm -hmm. soul is the... Um, the energy the frequency which is the frequency of them 
but the difference being that I have had 62 years of an apprenticeship to figure out and work with soul energy to make it fairly clear, easy and understandable in terms of what is transmitted. Right. Most of the time you could say soul is a, a remembering system and a teaching system to some degree. So it actually is here to, uh, to, to begin to open up awareness and consciousness to the fact that we are in this game of life uh, simply for the reason to experience, grow, transform in order to understand that we are source in physical form. And so when we understand we are source in physical form, we understand the omnipotent power of that and that we really are infinite infinite systems of possibilities. In other words, there's no limits to what we can do. Yes. Save for the fact that we are conditioned. We come into a life form, a life form and a life path that shuts us off from that understanding. Therefore, our early days are about what our environment programs into us. That means our blood family, our extended family, our, uh, the, the things about us, the people about us, the uh, things we observe and experience directly, and our culture, our lineage, our heritage, all of these are factored in to what we then evolve as little, little beings we see the world through those eyes and those experiences. And our work is, is then set in train to sort of unravel all that, to discover ourselves in the journey of life by the process of experiencing, mm -hmm. choosing, defining, deciding, and then evolving. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Can you, um, cause I know that when you're, you're saying soul, you say S O L where the average person realistically is going to consider soul S O U L. Can you uh, explain the difference or are uh, you, uh, yeah. The, 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 the soul is what was defined in, in many, uh, religions and theologies, and I'm not talking about just the conventional ones, I'm talking about mm -hmm. the uh, polyatheistic uh, uh, theologies of the Egyptian period. They all considered that we had a, um, an energy within us that gave us life. And they, uh, the word soul is not necessary. I can't remember where it came from but I think its origins were way beyond Christianity. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so you could say it was, a, it's an energy system that, that when we are created as little cells, when, you know, the masculine and the feminine combined, and there is the spark of life. And there actually is a fact that there is, requires actually a spark. A, a, an electrical conduit to actually fuse the uh, two parts of the masculine and feminine in order to start, start the cycle of mm -hmm. uh, cellular regeneration to form that embryo. So without that, it, it, there no spark, no life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and so you could say that spark is the spark that gives consciousness to the cells mm -hmm to start mm -hmm. co-creating into a form of a human being. Exactly. Okay, so soul, S-O-U-L, is the conventional terms. Mm -hmm. For our purpose, we use soul as an acronym to signals of love. It's a mm -hmm. transmission frequency which, which brings through uh, wisdom of, uh, and... Uh, 
what I call remembrance, uh, reactivating the awareness, and also uh, understanding, and indeed teaching, if we're going to use those words. Mm -hmm. But it's a frequency that not just does that, it is a transforming, healing, transmuting frequency. So it it mm -hmm. goes beyond those things that it's here to teach. It's not just that. It's here to transform and change mm -hmm. and if necessary, heal if there's a, an imbalance or a mm -hmm. imbalance. So, right. so that, that's why soul is here at this time then? Well, if you look around your world, and you see what's going on. Um, I think it's a time in humanity's evolution mm -hmm. uh, that it is sorely needed. There mm -hmm. needs to be a wake up call of something. Uh, mm -hmm. We need to be able to see a different dimension of ourselves as a collective. Mm -hmm. um, in the words of Sol, we are co-creators, but we are also co-destroyers. Yes. You know, when we were given the choice to experience physical life, there were no rules. Nobody handed down uh, tablets with Ten Commandments. You know, we were given <laughs> free will, free choice to do yeah. whatever we wanted. Because if you think about it, like, you know, what intelligence that is imbued in pure love that creates virtual uh, copies of itself would cause itself to control itself, to say, hey, you gotta follow rules here. Otherwise, if you have to follow rules, there is no, there's a limitation on experience. Its mm -hmm. baseline here is to experience, evolve and grow. And experience means every experience. Mm -hmm. No matter, we turn, we as human beings in the, in the physical three dimensional world tend to judge according to our belief base and our experience, mm -hmm. what an experience should or shouldn't be. Mm -hmm. Therefore, we have created rules, regulations, laws, ad infinitum in the mm -hmm. way we must behave, simply because we're not connected to the source, mm -hmm. which is pure love. If we were connected, every, every aspect of human behavior would be in alignment with love. It would be mm -hmm. in alignment with loving ourselves, loving our neighbors, loving the planet, loving all life that exists on the planet and loving the way we live and cooperate and coexist with not only our fellow human beings but also with the planet if humans were awake and aware that this ability this part of them existed none of what you see would exist. Mm -hmm. We would not Can have the political systems, the social systems, the military systems, the policing systems, because we would be a civilization where everything respects, tolerates, accepts yes. all life in its present mm -hmm. form. Even despite the fact we may be diversified, and that's an essential part of growth. Mm -hmm. that we honour the diversity, we mm -hmm. honour the differences as well as the similarities. But the one key connecting thing here is we honour the fact that we are the one consciousness. Yes. Yes, because I, I know a lot of people talk about, you know, the three dimension versus the five dimension. Can you explain to the viewers three dimension compared to the five dimension so people in, have that in, better in, understanding in simple terms three dimensions means physical life as we know it mm -hmm. when i tap this i feel solid that's three dimensional mm -hmm. and i said that's an illusion because we're not 
we're only that because we have sight, sound, taste, touch, mm -hmm. and all of those sort of things. If they were switched off, we would have no reference point to physicality. Therefore, three dimensions would not exist either. Mm -hmm. Okay? All of this is really an illusion. Mm -hmm. Five dimension is essentially the awakening to what people refer to as Christ consciousness as a collective. Basically, the awareness to understand that we are frequency. We are non-physical, playing the game of physical. Okay? We are dumbed down. We have, we have devoluted, devolved from being 5D or 10D. You see, they, they say 5D. Well, in effect, there are no Ds. There are no Ds. They are def definitions that humans give to some form of trying to understand infinite source consciousness. Now, mm -hmm. uh, there's another way of playing with, with that, that, uh, that description. Infinite source consciousness is non-local. Physicality is local because it's got a place, a reference point. You're sitting in that chair. I am sitting in that chair. Therefore, we are in local 3D space. Mm -hmm. Only because we are physical or we have the perception of physical. Therefore, our mind is local. Our thinking is local. Our emotions are local. Our actions and behaviours are local or 3D. And therefore, the cause and effect mm -hmm. of our actions and behaviours are also local. Mm. However, mm. when you go into the other side, the 5D or beyond, mm. there is no 5D in that particular respect because it is non-local. There are non... The people say five dimensions. Well, according to soul, there are infinite dimensions because at that level, we create infinite dimensions. Now, I'll tell you how we do it. We even do it on the, uh, on the local level. How many parts of you can you, can you describe in terms of um, things about you? You know, if I was saying to you, how many parts of you exist? Mm. You could call those dimensions. For example, you're a host of an interview program, but you're a mother and you're a dog lover, you're a, you're a shopper, you, you're a wife. These are dimensions. They're dimensions of space, time, actions and behaviours. So therefore, I've just mentioned more than five and you mm -hmm. could probably discover 20 or 30. You know, you're a churchgoer, you're a, you belong to a, a, a club of some kind, you're employed by... Uh, you're, you're an employee. Therefore, that is a dimension of existence, a dimension of experience. So, mm -hmm. therefore, you're multidimensional in a dimensional world. What's to say that when you leave the physical plane, that you are infinite? Mm -hmm. There is no dimensions. It is beyond that. And mm -hmm. the, the people are trying to get their minds around what is often a very difficult concept. Non-local means there isn't a place for it. It exists beyond time and space, and even those are local attributes um, which humanity has developed and co-created to measure something, a reference point. It gives us some sort of idea of how we define ourselves. But if Source suddenly decided, I'm going to switch off all of these guys' um, ability to see, hear, taste, and touch. Okay, I'm just going to switch them all off right now. And there wouldn't be a reference point mm. to solidity. We would more or less be reconnected with Source. Mm -hmm. How, here's another way of looking at it. Go and ask a man or a woman who is blind and ask them what their world 
feels and looks like. Mm -hmm. Then go and find a person that is blind and deaf. Mm -hmm. And if you can communicate with them, ask mm -hmm. them what their world looks and feels mm -hmm. like. And yeah, their world is completely different to your world. Yeah, like Helen Keller, because I know um, that they'd give her like a stone, like a hot stone to hold on to or a cold stone to hold on to for sense perception and such. Yeah, they see the world through a different parameter. Mm -hmm. They see the world through the, the touch frequency. So their world of color and sight becomes the world of touch mm -hmm. and their reference points. Mm -hmm. Now, if they they were, if they've had these these facilities removed, and they had some concept of sight and what the world looks like and the color of the world, they could convert that to data. But what if they're born that way? Mm -hmm. What if they're born? They have to construct a different perception of reality from scratch. What if they have no reference points to what a stone is? or a blade of grass is, or the colour of a blade of grass. What if they have no perception between, you know, we can see wet and dry, we can see the drops, we can feel them. What if they can only see the wet and dry and know no different? What, mm -hmm. you know, they can't see the drops. They can't, uh, they can only feel them. They can't see the grass. They can feel its texture. It's, it's length, they cannot see the colour. So how do they know grass is grass? So yeah, this is, this is a, you know, a completely different perspective of mm -hmm. reality. And people take this for granted. They think because they have eyes, ears, and, and the ability to smell and touch, that, you know, that's the world of everybody. Let me tell you that, we are all unique. So we see with different eyes, you know, we hear with different ears. Um, uh, often, you know, you go into a conversation and you start a conversation with somebody and you're chatting away, they are processing it through a different, mm -hmm. a different, a, a different processor. Mm -hmm. They pick up words and they process it in reference to their knowledge base. So that your eyes, the rods and cones in your eyes, see in variations of different colours. Mm -hmm. You know, I might see more blues and then reds. You may see more reds and blues and greens. So we see differently. Mm -hmm. We certainly smell differently. And our taste buds are completely, uh, are fairly unique as well. Mm -hmm. so, um, so, you know, it, to, to assume that we are one clone of each other is totally inaccurate. Mm. We are very, very different human beings. Uh, I mean, I, I come from a medical science background and I've been in theatres where the heart is not in the, the right places, somewhere completely different. Yes. Um, so, you know, you talk to surgeons and they say, no, the human anatomy has infinite mm. variabilities in, in, in its look, appearance, size, position and everything else. So we are exact clones of each other. We're fairly unique models of a mm. general facility, which we, as human beings, as mm -hmm. source itself, we co-created us. We co-created the world itself, the planet itself, the experience. And we co-create mm -hmm. everything uh, that we do in our own personal lives. And also because we belong to collectives and we belong to the biggest collective, which is humanity, we co-create there as well. Yes. Yes. And that's why it, it, the, it exists in the duality, reality, the co-creation. Okay. That's, uh, so you, 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 you're actually moving into a completely different, a, a different extension of the same topic. Duality existed from the moment that source co-created all elements of itself. Mm -hmm. The moment those elements chose to create physicality, mm -hmm. 
duality began to exist because if a source was to stay understanding staying and knowing even all the components of it the infinite components of it would have no way of evolving mm -hmm. if there wasn't some structure in place that allowed it to compare and contrast its experience mm -hmm. so right from the time that light appeared absence of light also was co-created into existence mm -hmm. you, you could say that protons and electrons arrived Ooh. at the same point in time and so we move from uh, quanta and and electronic particles into the field of molecular systems consequently today duality is a necessary part of our evolution mm -hmm. And duality exists in the physical experience mainly because it's not necessary in the infinite experience because the infinite experience already has it. Once mm -hmm. the experience has been uh, experienced, it becomes memory. Memory is then shunted back to source. It's instantaneous. Mm -hmm. But once source has the memory, it also has the experience. You can say source feels what you feel. It, it experiences what you experience. Mm -hmm. And basically, after that, it's derived or derided into uh, that place of memory. In other words, it's storage. As memories, as we create memories, they, uh, they are memories we hold on to or memories we let go of. But they're still memories. So they're, they're energy systems. Mm -hmm. Our physiology and neural systems are all designed to, uh, to work in the way it needs to work to actually mm -hmm. create uh, the interface to, to local consciousness mm -hmm. and the interface to mm -hmm. um, source consciousness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what's the best way to make it work? Like how does the, um, the co-creation work and when does it work? So if somebody asked you that, right? They're like, how, you know, when is this going to work and how do I make it work? Okay. That's probably not the question. The question is, is that you are, the question is more of a statement. You are doing this 100% of the time right mm -hmm. now. You are co-creating all your experiences right now, every one of you. Mm -hmm. but you're doing it unconsciously. Okay? Mm -hmm. There's never any rules mm -hmm. in this game, as I said. Basically, you, uh, you can create any experience. The difference between you knowing that you do this unconsciously and consciously is the fact that when you understand that this is this can be applied in a conscious manner mm -hmm. you then become the architect and the navigator mm -hmm. of your world because then you choose your experience yes yes choose so how does way. somebody you yes. choose it wisely and you choose it carefully mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so how would somebody become more conscious because I have people ask me, how do I become more conscious? And I thought I'd wait until um, I spoke to you about it because that way they can get your understanding as well. Okay. Conscious. There are. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the word conscious mm -hmm. is a very big field. It's used mm -hmm. in all sorts of area. I am conscious of my big toe. I am conscious of being here right now. I am conscious of my diet. I am conscious of my appearance. It, mm -hmm. it goes on and on and on. We are always evolving into some form of awareness and consciousness. Mm -hmm. that, that happens because mm -hmm. we're in the physical world. And if you can remember the way your consciousness was when you were six and the consciousness of the 16-year-old, 
the consciousness of a 26 year old or a 36 year old they're different mm -hmm. some people say stay very fixed on their consciousness some evolve very much faster but consciousness always evolves in the local level because you are always choosing things to avoid pain and things to create more comfort if you like in your physical world F things that would give you a greater deal of awareness so you explore the different things in your life and therefore you become more conscious of mm -hmm. the appearance of ah okay suddenly uh, yoga I'll, I'm, uh, I'll go and explore that therefore you become more conscious of mm -hmm. what yoga gives you okay mm -hmm. and therefore yoga opens up a different uh, way I'm not necessarily I'm just using that as an example it's yeah. not by any means the only way there are trillions of ways mm. but consciousness at the local level is the evolutionary path by which we use duality to understand something different something uh, great uh, something that uh, is making us uncomfortable where we want to change it to a uh, another way of being yes exactly now in that in that sense duality is a springboard for for that particular mm -hmm. thing and it's a necessary part of uh, you could say suffering uh mm -hmm. without your understanding suffering is an all-encompassing all word for what goes on in predominantly most of the planet you know even billionaires suffer even despite the fact they have you know uh, more money. money's just energy anyways but, I, I know but uh, you know money can make your life comfortable Mm -hmm. you know, uh, most people would say uh, they would rather have it than not have it yeah. but, uh, exactly it just, make, it just it just makes life comfortable but it yeah. doesn't necessarily <laughs> make you happy compassionate tolerant or anything else it's just simply a mechanism to make you mm -hmm. comfortable and i'm not saying that it is not incorrect it is it is right that you should experience both poverty and mm -hmm wealth because mm -hmm. that is what you're here to do i agree how do you know what well how do you know until you've been in poverty absolutely what what wealth would feel like what wealthy so you become more aware mm -hmm. of the real reality value of mm -hmm. wealth or financial liberation mm -hmm. And because you have been in that place that has been a pet perpetual cycle of lack and now you've moved through that through various uh, steps mm -hmm. and you have your wealth but you respect your money you respect and you are grateful for everything and in, in the most cases you are grateful for all the comfort you have the thing and i'm talking about you in the sense that you are the co-creator of this of this um, activation of change mm -hmm. uh to get you from one space to another but in, in a sense all of this you know uh, you look all over and that people want to be successful they want to build their businesses they're only looking at a very small fraction Mm -hmm. of the trajectory because mm -hmm. we have this imperative built inside of us whether it's through success business relationships or anything else we're always looking to discover the truth mm -hmm. that truth we are it's a circle we are source in an experience co-creating experience and learning about ourselves mm -hmm. to discover ourselves that's mm -hmm. the, you know people always ask me I said what's our true purpose and I say well whatever you choose right right because I think I think it's so wonderful when people that have um, that are able to you know have the money abundance in financial and they take their children let's say to a, like a poor country or around a poor neighborhood so they can appreciate what they have and they can really see the difference mm. You know, give them that they, more they, awareness they, they, and consciousness they, they, to, to understand. They can, help. 
help those people at the same time whilst uh, they're in those places, yes. Um, what I'm alluding to here is that the question of duality mm -hmm. is, is, is integrated into the process of change mm -hmm. and evolution. So in a sense, if you like, we are all here to transform mm -hmm. ourselves, step one. Two, we are here to transmute the old to the new. That means taking out the old programs, belief systems, and creating a new version of ourselves. And we are, to, we are here to essentially heal. Heal means teach. Mm -hmm. A healer is really a teacher. Um, is to heal teach ourselves about our journey and maybe to share that with others. Because healing in, in itself isn't healing others. Mm -hmm. Because as a healer, you're really healing yourself. Mm -hmm. And if you really want to understand the impact of real healing, all your clients are mirrors of you. Mm -hmm. Therefore, when you see them inside of you, they're here to allow you to heal what they're mirroring back to you. Okay, mm -hmm. and the dimensions of that, that's a complicated subject. But in the sense that if you heal yourself, you heal them as well. Absolutely. So, so duality exists at the 3D level. So we can define and build an awareness that we are talking about today, that we are extensions of source. Play. Mm -hmm. Shakespeare was really right on the ball when he said it's all a game, it's a drama, it's a stage. And we're, we're the world's greatest storytellers. We, you know, we've mm -hmm. been telling ourselves stories about reality for since the beginning of time. And the stories were originally um, the same statement I just gave you. We are source playing out a particular role to create experiences. But mm -hmm. over time we miss, well, we, we created new stories and therefore we disempowered ourselves and moved into a state of separation from ourselves. Mm -hmm. Consequently, the burden mm -hmm. that we place upon ourselves in the physical world by actions of behavior related to being non-conscious is what we are here to discover. Because the moment we wake up and say, I am creating, and this means that you have to say and accept total responsibility. What comes out of your mouth, what comes out of your actions, and what comes out of your behaviors mm -hmm. in every aspect of your life. Mm -hmm. Now, some people like the idea that I take this bit, but I don't want to do that bit. It doesn't work that way. Mm -hmm. Once you're fully awake, when once you begin mm -hmm. to understand that you that your actions and behaviors, um, your actions and behaviors basically affect everything. Mm -hmm. And yeah. you see. When you're asleep, when you're unconscious, you have no understanding of that effect. So therefore you go on in the same way. We've been doing this as a species for nearly 100,000 years. You know, uh, we've been acting and behaving in the same way. I mean, there are uh, tribes and, and, and countries that have been at war with each other for 10,000 years within their own country, but also fighting foreign invaders. They haven't changed. They still do the same thing. And they hand down the lineage of that culture to their children. Mm -hmm. Okay? Still goes on right now. So, you know, have we changed? Well, we've just got better at it. Yeah. We've become more efficient at, 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 at devising our neighbours. Mm -hmm. Okay? But the essential underlying aspect of that is we are still unconscious. Mm -hmm. The moment we became conscious, we imbibe another thing called love, which is what basically source is all about. It's infinite love 
with infinite possibilities. And that's who we really are. And when we begin to shift into that frequency, we act and behave in a different way. And if you can imagine if with the whole of this planet shifted in to this frequency, mm -hmm. at one point, uh, everything would change virtually overnight. Mm -hmm. Everything. And we would turn around all the realities that we're constructing right now and go in another direction. Yes, because there's, there's a lot of people that, you know, will stay in their ego when, you know, I'm like, you know, talk to your heart, talk to your soul. It, you know, when you're staying in ego, it, you know, it goes the other direction. Well, what is ego? Really, uh, when a child comes in, it's a clean slate. It doesn't have an ego. The ego is programmed into the, they become the living extensions of their environment. So if they're in a culture that says you're a woman and therefore you are lesser than anything else, that's the way they live and they see their perspective in life. Mm -hmm. If you're in a culture where, say, boy, you have all your neighbours are your enemies. Here's an AK-47. You know, when your enemies come next to you, you use that. That's ego. That's what's engaged, mm -hmm. imbibed, programmed and embedded into those mm -hmm. children. Mm -hmm. And you see it all over the world where in Africa, young children are pulled out of their schools, mm -hmm. taken away from their parents, given AK-47s to become mm -hmm. child soldiers. They don't know any different. And mm -hmm. that way of life becomes them. Mm -hmm. We create, we co-create our children. And if we continue to do that, the children just mm -hmm. act and behave according to what they observe and what yes. they experience. Yes. So we, we carry on mm -hmm. the heritage, the lineage, and the memories of our forefathers mm -hmm. to produce and reproduce mm -hmm. the same stuff hundreds of years, hundreds of years before. You know, we've just... We're near the uh, Second World War, 1947. Yeah, we're nearly at the 100 year mark of the, uh, the, the uh, Second World War. No, the 80, yeah, 70 years. Now, when we, when we get to a point where everybody who's been involved in that war, which my parents were, um, the memories fade. The generation after that don't hear a lot about it. They have no experience in a war. Therefore, they don't comprehend the horrors of what that brings. Mm -hmm. They can read about it. It is absolutely not the same. Mm -hmm. You can't read about an experience. You have to mm -hmm. experience an experience. Yes. And therefore, if they have no experience of a war, then, and they are still programmed the same way as their forefathers, it's very likely, what will, and we do this. It's inevitable. We do this unless we change. We, mm -hmm. will, we will continue to have wars. We will continue to fight amongst ourselves. We will continue to be in separation from ourselves. Mm -hmm. We will continue to not love ourselves. Yes. So if somebody came to you and they said to you, you know, Bob, I don't know, um, you know, how to give love or, or what is love because I've never been loved. So let's say somebody, you know, like a child, or it doesn't matter the age, really, you know, and they're like, you know what, I don't believe in it. I don't know it. Um, what would you say to them to try to, you know, raise them to a different level of consciousness to try to you know, help them see more and what direction they should go towards. Especially somebody who's that's never a, had that's love. A, that's a really interesting question because mm -hmm. we are not here to rescue people. No, we no, I agree. Here, but We are here to show them options 
and we allow them the, the free will to choose the options. Now, a lot of people that come into our field of experience come through trauma, which allows them to re, um, as I did. And you, you could say that my trauma was the greatest gift that my parents could give me, my father could give me. I didn't realize that until in my, in my mid twenties and thirties. Mm -hmm. But I said, you know, and uh, in the middle of writing a book, and it, the, 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 um, uh, the chapter was called My Blessed Parents. And, you know, he beat me and he was a drunkard and he was an alcoholic, but he was repeating the same history as his father and his grandfather. Mm -hmm. And the, he was just simply didn't know any better. Okay, that was the way you reared kids. You mm -hmm. helped the shit out of them, so to speak, um, in order to bring them into control. Mm -hmm. And so the point being is that I was uncontrollable because the more he beat me, the more I just, you know, resisted. And so it just was a, an ever engaging thing until I eventually just gave up resisting and until I was big enough to actually mm -hmm. stand up to him. Mm -hmm. But in then, I just, what I learned is avoidance, you could say. Mm -hmm. uh, just avoid it. And um, so, that, you know, you, you learn these things of how to avoid pain and you learn mm -hmm. through that. But you see, it, doesn't, it didn't help because of the way I felt about myself. You know, I, mm -hmm. I had self-worth issues. I had uh, mm -hmm. you know, ability to talk issues, all of those sort of things mm -hmm. uh, came about. Um, but I found my way to heal. I discovered the way to find myself. And it's actually really another story, but I found it through singing. Mm -hmm. I found it through the ability to sing, which was one of my greatest loves. You now I sang for 30 years as, a, as an amateur principal in various musical societies around Australia. Mm -hmm. So that, you could say, I discovered who I was and my voice was then allowed to, to sing. Yeah. And you could say that was, that was one of the ways I found uh, the love in yeah. myself. Mm -hmm. To answer that specific question that you just posed, is that inside every person is another voice. Call it intuition, call it the inner tutor, call it the voice, call it the presence, call it soul, whatever it is. If you decide that you want to discover, you really want to discover the love that you are, it's already there. Mm -hmm. Allow source to open up the pathways in the physical mm -hmm. world for you to take. For me, it was, it was going to a new school, discovering they did musicals, accidentally getting into the wrong queue mm -hmm. for the audition. And it was just simply a, a start point. But mm -hmm. you could say accidentally, it wasn't accidentally because mm -hmm. you know, there was a sequence. Yeah. <laughs> But, it was soul pushing you. Yes, yes. Well, actually, it was my mate who pushed me, pushed me out onto stage in the wrong in the wrong um, audition. Uh, <laughs> that, that that you could say kicked off my career. And he was acting in a place because Terry was the man, the young man, the, the, the friend that gave me the push that I needed, which actually allowed me to be here today. That was the greatest push of history for me. Mm -hmm. You know, that one, one push out onto the middle of a stage in an audition that I didn't want to be in. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, you know, next time we meet, we can talk about that if, if anybody's interested. But <laughs> the, um, they would be. They would be. Because yeah. I get asked that. I get asked that question. That, that's why I brought it up. And but um, mm -hmm. we all are love. You know, we're the extensions of us. 
are the extensions of source. And I said, we're exact replicas, exact duplicates mm -hmm. to the thing. So what source has, we have as well. Okay, if source is infinite love, so are we. We, we have just been given a firewall, so to speak. And that firewall is usually our environmental conditioning, which prevents us from seeing. Our parents are firewall, we, they firewall us. We are the little um, projection. You know the old story, you, uh, you act like your mother, you behave like your father, you marry your mother, you marry your father, all of those sort of things, those are truisms because we mimic what we see and what we experience as children. And then we create the same trajectory. We, we respond to our parenting as our parents did until we discover that it doesn't work. We respond to our life, our eating habits, our shopping habits, our dressing habits, and all of those things in relation to our environments. Part of that journey is to question all of those sort of things. Is to say, is this really me? I suppose that's the contextual question. Is this me? Who am I really? Yeah. And who do I wish to discover? You see, mm -hmm. in many ways, if I remember I can't remember whether I, I was intentionally asking or whether it just simply happened. But I, I remember, I have a memory of when I was 10, maybe it was the following year at 11, of intentionally asking this voice for it to be my, uh, to walk with me in life consciously. You know, I wasn't I wasn't aware of all the things I was aware of as a ten year old, but I remember intentionally asking this voice, this presence, this facility to be my shadow, if you like, mm. not my shadow side, but my shadow mm -hmm. of enlightenment right throughout my life. And you see, I've been a teacher since mm. I was eight. I was a teacher to my parents. They couldn't speak English. I was the translator. I taught them a lot of things that they didn't understand about the world and the world that they're in because they were from a different culture and a different place. So you could say that I was virtually grounded mm -hmm. into being a teacher uh, right from the word go. And I still sort of do that today. Um, but in this sense, uh, I'm taking it to a higher dimension and, and allowing myself to be a conduit for souls, mm. to share that wisdom and share those mm. opportunities mm. for people to uh, begin to uh, come on the journey with us. Mm. This is not just about a change, it's a journey. Mm. You know, mm -hmm. We're all on this journey to discover mm -hmm. the truth of who we are. Um, but different people come at it from different ways. And there is no right way or no wrong way. There is just simply an experience. Yeah. And from that, we just simply learn and say, well, I went down that path and that didn't work. I'm going to open up to another path. Mm. You know, it's also will take us where we need to go. If we understand, we can connect with that energy and intentionally ask for that path to be revealed. Mm -hmm. But ensuring that we are aware that when these things come, they're not sync, they're not random, they're not random events. They are mm -hmm. synchronized events because we tend to forget that we ask. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I get people, you know, they're like, oh my gosh, I'm turning into my mom, I'm turning into my dad. You know, they look around and they, you know, they see, you know, I've been married twice, my mom's been married twice, or, you know, my dad moved to, you know, two different locations and I moved to two different locations and then they start to freak out. <laughs> well, the, and in, that's, that's the, that's the, um, that's them beginning to see mm -hmm. their programming, their environmental uh, programming, their imprints, because that's mm -hmm. exactly what they are seeing. 
That's what mm -hmm. they're experiencing. Now, the, the, the freaking out means, that, well, the question is, do you want to continue down this line? Yeah. Or do you wish to change it? Exactly. And what do you exactly. do to change it? Yeah, ex I was always the black sheep in my family. <laughs> well, the black sheep means that you looked at, you looked at the, uh, the versions of yourself via the mirror of, your, of the other siblings. I was total opposite of everybody. Yeah, you, you looked at it and said, you know, you, you probably never even did it consciously. You would have done it fairly unconsciously. But you decided that you weren't going to copy no. what they were. No. And you went on a different path. We all choose oh. different paths. My father was an alcoholic. My brother ended up in the same space. I chose not to drink. Yeah. Okay. I, my, my, father, my brother, he didn't choose violence because his wife was bigger than him. Mm -hmm. So uh, he, he never got involved in that, in that particular facility. I chose, always chose reconciliation uh, mm -hmm. in, 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 in any certain situations. Yeah. Because it's good to look at it. I mean, my, my sister in England, she, she was an alcoholic and she died on my birthday. And I mean, I'm, I'm not a drinker. I'm a, like a social drinker, not even that really. But, it, you know, it really stays in your awareness. You, you know what I mean? I find that because even other people, they say, well, you know, my family might have, you know, addictions with this, this and that. You know, and I'm like, yeah, you can really take a look at that, what they're struggling with, and look at yourself and ask yourself, do I really want to go down that path? Do I really want to struggle like they are? So, you know, people will, you know, meditate more, you know, on that awareness. Yeah. You know, it depends. Yeah. But for me, the journey was at a certain point became very focused and intentional. Mm -hmm. I chose to evolve the skill I have intentionally in my mid thirties. I chose to teach variations of those skills. Mm -hmm. So it became really focused and intentional. And I moved out of my corporate job, went into alternative medicine for many years, mm -hmm. which helped me evolve a deeper and wider understanding of energy and frequency. And then uh, that was a stepping stone into the teaching elements. And then there was a there was a 16 year period of retirement before now I'm back doing this mm -hmm. uh, sort of mm -hmm. stuff again. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it was uh, co-creation global, which is the facility I founded in 2016 mm -hmm. is the, uh, the community or the mm -hmm. movement we're facilitating to create yes. global change. Mm -hmm. and, um, that and, and that's even why I do my work is the same reason mm -hmm. you know what I mean because different life experiences it's it's like you want to be able to help and teach people how to take a certain situation and with a better understanding to help them shift and move forward into their own awareness yep yeah mm -hmm. yep. I mean one of the, uh, the greatest things I learned along this road is that service has its own rewards. Mm -hmm. oh. If we are here to serve others, we are here actually to serve ourselves because mm -hmm. others are us. You know, when you, when you, when you go and ask, you, you're grateful. A lot of people don't ask the question, what or who are you grateful to? Mm -hmm. Well, you're grateful to every person that is you or an extension mm -hmm. of source like you for bringing whatever it is you're grateful for into your experience. You're grateful to your source version of yourself for creating the space that you can be in this time and in this place, experiencing the joys or the suffering of whatever you've created in your life as a means to, um, to evolve and transform mm -hmm. and to understand that mm -hmm. you are source. Mm -hmm. So with your, with, with your father, um, you know, being an alcoholic, if he was like standing in front of you right now, you know, and he said, you know, Bob, um, I'm an alcoholic, right? 
can you help me? What, what would you say to him, you know, to try to help him, you know, ease out of addiction? Because I know disease is dis-ease, <clears throat> right? Okay, I wouldn't do anything different than I did. My mm -hmm. father developed um, alcoholic dementia, mm. which is a, a, the yeah. breaking down. It's actually uh, alcoholism breaks down your ability to access and use vitamin D, which actually also is a precursor for neurological and brain, uh, brain, cell, uh, mm -hmm. uh, brain cell function. Uh, there was a point where he got so, he became so demented, we had mm -hmm. no option except to put him into care. And he stayed yeah. in care for 20 years. I, as I said, I would do nothing different. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. You see, all people with addictions have a choice. The addiction is part of themselves. The addiction is linked to something a lot deeper. Mm -hmm. It's a masking of pain. Mm -hmm. But part of that journey is to discover the pain. Sometimes that pain is self-generated. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, they've written a story about what, it, what you know, what it is, and they've been living that story. Sometimes mm -hmm. it's a real physical trauma that occurred mm -hmm. at some point in their yeah. uh, pre, you know, past life. Um, um, all of these are about making a choice. You can't force an alcoholic to become a non-alcoholic. They have to make that decision and make that step for themselves and decide that they were no longer an alcoholic or, or an addict of any, any particular description. Mm -hmm. Then that's, part, that's the first step in the process of reassembling mm -hmm. their lives, reassembling um, the part of them that, that is fall out of sync, discovering what it is they were and who they were now, and then choosing to become something different. Mm -hmm. You see, there's a, in the languaging of, uh, of, of the world we live in, we all say, you know, how can we help people? We say, how can we can only provide the facilities, the understanding. They're the ones that have to help themselves. So we're just in, so instruments of that, that mechanism. Remember, an alcoholic comes to you, and you may not be an alcoholic, but you will have a sliver of some form of habitual behaviour or uh, addictive behaviour, whether it's chocolate, or whether it's sugar, or whether it's something else, they will mirror something to you that reflects addiction. Mm -hmm. Okay, every human has it. Those people that work in the field of addiction also are addicts of some kind or another. They mm -hmm. may not reveal it. They may not talk about it. They may be totally unaware of it. You know, because um, we get mm -hmm. addicted to all sorts of things: washing dishes. Um, uh, cleaning floors, um, uh, sugar, hamburgers, um, the list goes on and on and on. Um, but so when we're in that environment of addiction, those people that are coming to us for help are actually mirroring us. So we clean up our addictions. If we know what they are, we'll discover mm -hmm. what they are. We actually help them heal. Mm -hmm. Cause I mean, even for the, you know, the guidance counselors, let like, for instance, of any addictions, you know, I find that with them, if they have experienced it, they're going to be able to truly help that person because they've been there and they know what level of consciousness they are on to be able to help them. And I find that the more that that counselor, whoever it is helping whoever, the more that they talk to people clients or whoever about certain issues the more that person they heal within themselves too so yeah, they're actually it, healing themselves by helping other people or guidance or whatever it is they're doing yeah it's it's a two-way street works it works in that direction you mm -hmm. know uh, there's an old it's been around for thousands of years healer heal thyself 
mm -hmm. uh, right through a time of Hi Hippocrates and, and various other mm -hmm. physicians. All physicians mm -hmm. are there to heal themselves through yes. the instrument of mirror, mm -hmm. the instrument of relationships. You know, this world is a, is a facility uh, and everything is relative to everything else. That's where the word relative mm -hmm. came from. It's relatively, everything coexists with everything else. So we are always in relationships. We always coexist with ourselves and with others. We all, always are collectively co-creating. And that's mm -hmm. the world we're in today. Mm -hmm. And the world that exists mm -hmm. because we created it. We co-created this whole thing. Mm -hmm. The earth, the planet, it exists because we exist. We put it here. You could say mm -hmm. that we, in, if you know, aliens came around flying around, uh, they could, we could say that we could be invisible because we have made the earth our own reality. It doesn't exist in other mm -hmm. realities or mm -hmm. it may exist in, in, uh, in other realities. Mm -hmm. We can live in one dimension, no dimensions, or <laughs> you know, we get into this complicated, this complicated <laughs> area of infinite dimensions, of infinite yeah. possibilities. So yeah, uh, yeah. Because uh, whenever I'm, I try Sorry. to avoid that level of complexity because it's beyond most yeah. people's understanding. I can really, <laughs> even as yeah. a mob, uh, grasp it themselves. And most quantum physicists haven't a clue. They create mm -hmm. all these theories mm -hmm. around it. And I oh. say to them, well, if mm -hmm. you're the creator of every experience, therefore mm -hmm. physics must be an ongoing, evolving, co-creative system that only exists here but could not exist somewhere else. Yeah, yeah. Because even when I'm with a client, I mean, the first thing I'll do is read into their level of consciousness to see where they're at. Mm -hmm. And speak to them on their level so they'll understand and have a better understanding well you yes know? of course language is important but you know we yeah we want to make things as simple as, as as we can so even the phds can understand it yeah uh, no absolutely absolutely so can you explain the greatest obstacle to our infinite possibilities uh, yes uh, it's all of the stuff your parents taught you, all of the stuff your environment taught you, all of the stuff your teachers taught you, all of the stuff your friends taught you, all of the stuff your peers taught you, all of the stuff that is untrue, all of the stuff you read. Now, you know, everything that comes from another human being is another human being's experience. So mm -hmm. we're, we're, you know, whoever that, that author, that influencer is, that's their perspective. It's not necessarily your perspective. No. You want to access the, the infinite library of, of knowing, of knowledge and wisdom. It's already within you. Mm -hmm. But nobody goes to that library. They go to the physical library and read stuff written by other people, which is their story and their experiences. They're mm -hmm. not yours. They may appear to be similar. That's a perception. I've said this before in this interview. Um, that essentially limitation is given to us by the environment we begin our life in physical form. Mm -hmm. And that environment could be a Zulu in Africa mm -hmm. or you in America. And your your experience in America could be with a family of billionaires, or it could be, you know, a farmer out in Kansas, a dirt poor. Mm -hmm. It could be those. They are your beginning roots mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. understanding. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. When do you think, like, yeah? When, when do you think, like, even conception is so? when you know like the concept conception is made do you think that the, the child stays in the mother's wound immediately or comes in on the third month six month what is your sense on that it's a co-creation event therefore the instrument you call soul is forming part of the building blocks 
mm -hmm. building the phys its own physical form. So it's there. Uh, mm -hmm. it, 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 people are trying to make it as though it's located there. Mm -hmm. But it's not. It's engaging. It's pulling through the energy of source. It is in two places, if you like. Mm -hmm. It's actually in no places. And it's in all yeah. places. Yeah. So to understand this, you need to also understand uh, the the nature of uh, of infinite possibilities of infinite mind, which is not located. Mm -hmm. It's in all places. It exists yeah. in every form on this planet. So therefore, we can't say that source is either here or there. It's neither here or there. Neither, mm -hmm. you know, it's everywhere, if mm -hmm. I can use an encapsulating term. So mm -hmm. it, it really doesn't matter because consciousness is consciousness. Mm -hmm. It's just simply the, uh, the system by which uh, the co-creative effect of two cells where the spark of life is initiated it begins the process of replicating. Now, indeed, the, uh, in some cases, that replication comes to full maturity and the, the, the living form is perfect. In other cases, it can become aberrated. There is a process that goes on that sometimes that, that, uh, that uh, life being does not complete that evolutionary finish. Mm -hmm. It terminates or it leaves yeah. now reasons for that. But those reasons are related to the uh, co-creation of an experience for the parent mm -hmm. as opposed to the child. The child becomes or that beginnings of what is a child is mm -hmm. part of the evolution of the process of these people learning or understanding the perceptions of love and grief and connection uh, to this life form uh, you know there, there are infinite reasons as well but mm -hmm. most beings complete and become sentient little beings okay so you know uh, you could say that at that point the moment of immersion it you know coming out that energy the soul spark if you like is embedded yeah. inside that living form. But in, mm -hmm. in between, it, it is between two worlds. Mm -hmm. Building mm -hmm. and the consciousness moves in closer to the period of emergence. Mm -hmm. And it is a sentient life form. It's actually sentient inside the womb because it, it experiences everything outside of the womb. Sounds, um, vibrations, its world is sonic uh, because it's embedded in water, so everything that comes into it comes through the amniotic fluid and mm. it learns of its environment that way. Music, people squealing, you know, uh, cars passing, uh, you know, clocks going off, television sets going, all of these become its world and it's a mm -hmm. sonic world uh, because it has no other method of reacting, mm -hmm. responding. Its other method is what the mother's emotional states are like, mm -hmm. her energy states, and also her nutritional states. Yeah. So the other environmental factors that affect uh, that particular uh, mm -hmm. being from uh, mm -hmm. in terms of there that that's its pre-environment. That's where it starts from the beginning of its course. Of yeah. You see, at that stage, the uh, the the child is not cognitive. Uh, it, it begins that process when it's emerged. Mm -hmm. Physically. Yeah. It then starts to understand light, sound, colour, taste, touch, mm -hmm. and starts invoking and involving itself in feelings and in touch and in mm -hmm. the physical joy of understanding how all of these bits work. Mm -hmm. And one, and then, you know, for the next six or seven years, it starts looking at a broader perspective of the environment, how it interfaces to its parents and its own, you know, other children in the group, mm -hmm. how it, uh, how it uh, reacts when it goes to 
uh, kindergarten and, and places like that. It gets a bigger and bigger deployment of experiences and starts mm -hmm. emerging into a state of starting to realize that it, it has, it forms opinions, it forms biases, it forms all of these other things that emerge. And basically by the time it's six or seven, it's pretty much programmed. Yeah, yeah, I agree. So I the, agree. The, the way that I, that source explains it is that there are experiences by observation. So we observe, and we put into effect the observation and that creates an experience. And the other mm -hmm. one is direct experience. You know, when we touch something and it's hot, it burns, they said, no, I won't do that again. That's a direct experience. Yeah. The other one is observing, you know, parents acting, reacting in certain situations. They say, oh, that's the way you're supposed to behave. Okay. So they adopt that and they accept that that's the way you're supposed to behave. Mm -hmm. Yeah, pretty much programmed by the age of six, seven, or eight. Yeah, and, and there they go. They've they've started. The, they're, they're on the <laughs> landing strip, and they're ready to take off into their their journey. And mm -hmm. realize, of course, that maybe they got on the wrong plane. Or <laughs> yeah, totally. That was me. <laughs> or or, or, or um, uh, they uh, need to uh, take control of the. Um, and sit in the pilot seat instead mm -hmm. of run by something else. Yeah. 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 So what do you think is the biggest conceptions humanity has right now? Uh, can you reframe the word conception? Um, the biggest issues humanity has. Well, they all have the certain. In most, in most, in most cases, if you're looking at the global consciousness, you look at similarities in the way we act and behave, and then you look at the cause and effect. I could say that the most predominant effect is that we are still mainly unconscious. Mm -hmm. We don't know who we are, uh, and that has been said by many philosophers avatars and, and, and uh, prophets from all sorts of traditions mm -hmm. for 10,000 odd years. We mm -hmm. don't know who we are and therefore we behave in a manner <laughs> that is not connected to uh, you know, the truth of who we are. We are, we are basically, um, you know, basically love, but we, we in the local world define love as something we feel, mm -hmm. we give, we receive. Most humans are love traders. I'll give you some love, you give them some back. Mm -hmm. it's a trading relationship in many mm -hmm. circumstances. And that's not the fact that that is an observation or indeed a, 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 it's an observation, but it's an also a, a certainly a truth because we learn that from our parents. Mm -hmm. you know, I'll give you some love, you give me some love back. Mm -hmm. I'll withdraw love in order to get something back. Yeah. And those things as well. So we also learn, we learn the, the physical attributes, the emotional attributes, and the mental attributes of love through many, many uh, defined experiences. Mm -hmm. And then we synthesize them and we apply them to our lives. Mm -hmm. You, you ask the question, why, why do many people go through two or three relationships? Well, relationships are about discovering the self because each yeah. relationship is a mirror back to you, about you. You want the ideal relationship, discover who you are. Mm -hmm. It is you want to be and then attract the partner that matches that frequency. Yes. Okay, a lot of people have no idea about that. I agree. And, and, that was and, and then, the, you know, the, the, this other thing called soul mate. <laughs> yeah, I want to meet my soul mate. Okay, you know what soul mate is? That person who pushes your buttons most of the time so you can grow all of the time. Mm -hmm. I agree. 
if you're sitting in a relationship that's all smoothy, smoothy, lovey, lovey, peaceful, we don't talk a lot, we watch a lot of terror, and we have a cuddle now and again, and blah, blah, blah. That is a relationship that is that is often what I call an equilibrium, but it doesn't go anywhere mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. there's no impetus, no stimulus for transformation or change. Yes. It's comfortable. Mm -hmm. I, I agree. Like, I, I agree with that. Yeah. Sometimes comfort is fine for, for a lot of people, mm -hmm. but it doesn't allow you to... Um, to evolve or it keeps you in a stasis a place where okay i'm happy with this and that's also an experience there's no there's no judgment there that can be an experience because some people prefer a life of peace tranquility and no waves i'm happy being good old retired bob yeah. Pottering around in the garden, not worrying about what the world going on in the world. You know, I'll just do what I've always done. And, you know, then, you know, I leave this mortal coil and discover who I really am or was. And I said, oh, shit, I missed out a lot of opportunities. <laughs> um, but, the, um, but the real truth of it is the soul mate is indeed that person that pushes your buttons. So you can, yes. you can change. Yes. And, and um, yes. So explain, um, so explain um, twin flame. Everybody says, oh, you're my soulmate or you're my twin, twin flame. You know, you get all, all of those talks. I mean, I'm the type of person that if I meet somebody that I think, you know what, there's potential. I like to get to know that person first, right? I'm like old school and then see if we can click on different levels and then we can maybe move it to the next step and so on. But people are like, when am I gonna meet my cellmate? When am I gonna meet my, my, my twin flame, right? And it's like, you gotta get to know who you are, as you said, absolutely. The twin flame is, is the Two other steps. version I, I, I spoke to you about. It's yeah. person, that you need to meet when you discover who you want, who you are. Yeah. In other words, you look at all of the basis of, you know, people who have twin flame, who want twin flames, obviously have gone through different experiences. And these experiences are based on uh, an experience that wasn't so comfortable. So they're finding, trying to find that place within themselves or without themselves, it's outside of themselves to bring somebody in that they define in a particular label. But the label isn't outside, it's not in that person, it's in them. Their twin flame, if you want to say, is indeed the mirror that they need to see of themselves through and with another person. You yeah. want to define, I mentioned this before, you want to define the relationship or the person that you want the relationship. Figure out what it is you want mm -hmm. for yourself. What qualities you want in yourself first. Gain those qualities, assemble those qualities. And then you are ready to invite a person that matches those qualities yeah. within you. But remembering, of course, is that, you know, that's the same story. You can have people of equal quality, but you need to open up, leave the door jar for those uh, important buttons to be pushed so you can both mm -hmm. evolve and grow, okay? It's that uh, perception that, okay, everything's lovey-dovey and will remain so. Maybe yes, if both choose to be like mm -hmm. that. Yeah. Again, I'm just repeating the view that we are the deployers and the co-creators of our reality experiences. If both want that lovey-dovey retirement mentality and we're just happy to, you know, plod along and be retired and pot in our gardens and forget the world exists, that is perfectly fine. 
Yeah. With one, with one I'll, probably end up, I'll probably end up just getting a dog, Bob. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, and dogs are great. Don't, I mean, I have a dog. She's outside there somewhere. Um, <laughs> and they're loving creatures. And they, yeah. they teach you a lot. Unconditional love. Yeah. Uh, more than that, actually, dogs' yeah. intelligence is totally un yeah. underrated by humanity, and they just realise that dogs actually have language. You can communicate with them, and they have much more stretch than people give them credit for. Yeah, because I'm an animal communicator, and, and I mean, that by far is one of my greatest gifts. Mm -hmm. I just, you know, it, it, it's just, I'm very grateful for it. And, and even when my wolfhound passed away, he opened up a whole different world to me with my abilities to communicate even further. It's amazing. Like it, it's just, you know, amazing. I could write about it forever. Like a thousand experiences. Yeah. Well, uh, uh, Jen, that's a, that's a conversation we can have with soul at a, at another time. Mm -hmm. uh, I must uh, now bid you all goodbye because I'm running out of time. <laughs> It's been really delightful uh, yes. meeting you all. And Jen, thank you for hosting this uh, uh, this discussion. You're and welcome. I look forward to the next one, which is will be coming up in a couple of weeks, I think. Yes, absolutely, right. absolutely. Okay. And I'll get some questions going again and see what everybody wants to hear. And well, get uh, in, what uh, what. Uh, we prefer, I mean, we, like soul and myself. Is, <laughs> that is, soul person. <laughs> that soul person, yeah. Uh, is questions from the audience, from the viewer. Yeah. Um, and so they can, you know, we can get real experiences and, and real mm -hmm. questions about people's experiences, their own understandings. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A lot of people don't understand co-creation. That's why we mm -hmm. are out here talking about it. And, Mm -hmm. uh, the when, where, how, why it all works. And um, so it's a discovery process for uh, a mm -hmm. lot of people. Um, yes, especially nowadays. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we're happy to, to enter whatever mm -hmm. stages and areas of conversation that, um, you know, people want, us, want to take us down. Mm -hmm. We yeah. generally find that when in, we're in groups that one person actually asks a question that many of the others uh, mm -hmm. also need to hear so um, we tend to extrapolate one question out of ten that is very similar and we'll answer mm -hmm. that usually it answers mm -hmm. the question for all the others so mm -hmm. that's the mm -hmm. way it works thank you so much everybody Jen, yes thank you thank so you, much Bob. I really appreciate this all and I actually look forward to the next episode now yeah. for those of you who don't know where we are uh, we will actually put this in when we send it out on our Facebook social media. But you guys may be in different social media villages. Um, we have a community on Facebook called Co-Creation Global Community. Okay. Go, for, go look us up. And if you feel like the messages we're talking about here, uh, join us. Because that community is what's becoming the movement. We're looking to put together 300 million people that understand and will understand and live in the world of co-creation, which we will help mm -hmm. to get there, uh, to become the future teachers and influencers of co-creation mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. actually begin to shift global consciousness. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. It's very important. Okay. Thank you so well, thank, much. Thank you, Bob. And, um, you know, I appreciate your time as well. Okay. You're most welcome, Jen. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, Bob.